Yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. This time with, uh, well, with another beer shirt actually. Uh, this one's from Sleeman. They were giving them away in the, the 24 packs over Christmas. Uh, so Sleeman, if you guys are watching, talk to me. Sponsorship opportunity, all right? Uh, but for real, problem 1428 left most column with at least a one. Uh, Facebook has been has been super super trigger happy with this one 72 times at least in the past year to six months it's one of their most popular or most asked questions of recent history so I figured we'd we'd cover it today together we're we're given a so it's an interactive problem first off meaning there are going to be some API calls that we're going to be working with but we're we're given a row sorted binary matrix okay row sorted binary matrix. Uh, which means that all elements are zero or one, and each row of the matrix is sorted in non-decreasing order. All right, that's going to be important to know, non-decreasing order. Given a row sorted uh, binary matrix, sorry, that's the definition. We're given one called binary matrix. We need to return the zero index or the index of the leftmost column with a one in it. Uh, if such an index does not exist, we return a negative one. Now, the difference is here, we don't need to, and, and this isn't going to change the problem much. It says we can't really access the binary matrix directly. Rather, we're given some sort of interface, an API, API caller method that we can use. Uh, two of them, one being binary matrix.get row and column, which will return the element at a, a certain row column pair. And the other is dimensions, which will return the dimensions as a matrix of the number of rows and columns in this thing. So we're not given a standard nested list. We don't know. Uh, we don't know for free kind of what the what the dimensions are, but we can figure it out with this call. And we also, in order to access the this is kind of matrix, uh, we need to use this this special call. Um, now, submissions making more than a thousand calls will be judged wrong. Also, any solutions that circumvent fine. Basically, they're going to kick us if we try to cheat. Let's look at this example here. We've got 0, 0, 1, 1, kind of row wise, I'm reading these out. The first time in the leftmost column in which we see a 1 appear is the 0th column, so we return 0. Here, the leftmost column with the 1 in it is column indexed 1. We don't have any here, so this will return negative 1. And in this example, the first time column wise from top to bottom that we see a 1 is an index 1, column 1, so we would return a 1. All right? Now, the constraints. Um, in particular, the important one here is going to be that the rows and columns are between size 1 and 100 inclusive. That means that, let's say we tried to do this a brute force way and say, let me, let me just walk through column by column and check every single element to see when we see the first one. And again, top to bottom, left to right, or left to right. Um, well, if we have a 100 by 100 matrix, we could go up to 10,000 calls on that on that matrix, whereas we're only, we're only allowed to make 1,000. So by default, just by the constraints of the question, we can't really brute force this thing, which then you know begs the question. Obviously, how will we do it? Uh, now I, I realize I could have drawn this a bit a bit bigger, but let's let's run with this example over here. We're interested in in looking at this thing kind of you know column wise and finding the first time that a one appears. All right, if we were, we're going down the columns, fine. Um, I I kind of thought about this one in a in a slightly different in a slightly different approach, and I'm, I think maybe you could do it column wise, but you know, I hear me out. I, I think that there's a a good possible way to walk through this kind of logically. I'm actually considering you know solving this by looking row by row, but if we solve it row by row, we can do this slightly more efficiently than 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 just brute forcing it. And what do I mean by that? Well, we need to keep in mind that these are sorted in a non-decreasing order, which means that I already messed up because this uh, this will need to be a one here. So non-decreasing order means that they're always either the same or the next element is higher. And again, we only have zeros and ones here. So you think to yourself, okay, let's take a step back. I've got an array of some sort, some sort of matrix, and I need to search through it, and it has a sorted order, a non either increasing or non-decreasing sort. What does that lend itself to? That's right, I heard you say binary search. So what if I was to say, let me look look through this over here, let me look through this row and say, can I find a one? And the way I'm gonna look for one isn't gonna be by saying, is this a one, is this a one, is this a one, is this a one, so on and so forth, because we'd make too many API calls. If I did a binary search, I could say, let me check the middle element here. You know, I've got kind of my, my left and my right. Um, I'll check the middle element is that if that's a zero, then I'll say cool if this is a zero Then everything to the left of it and including it shouldn't be relevant All I've got to do is search the right half here I'm gonna rinse and repeat this all the way through until I've done my binary search in this case I didn't find an index and and what we can do is we can start off by keeping some sort of 
you know, minimum index value. And, and maybe initially I'll, I'll set it to infinity. And, and what I'm going to say is the next time I find an index or a column, rather index to be specific, that, that contains a one, I'm going to compare that to the minimum index so far. So if I'm walking through this array now, I'm going to say, all right, I've got my left is over here. My right is over here. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done with this first row, so you can ignore that one. I'm going to check the middle element or check for the middle element. It's a zero. All right. So that wipes all of this out. Let's check in this half. And what I'm going to find by doing a binary search is that in this index here, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, column number 4, we actually see a 1. That's the first time in this row that we see a 1. So I'm going to say, I'm going to store this in, again, like a global resolve variable and say, I found the index 4. That's the minimum index so far, column-wise, in which we saw a 1. Now, let's rinse and repeat here. We're now on, on row 2, 0 indexed. I'm going to keep my, my left pointer here and my right pointer here. I'm going to check in the middle. Oh, damn, look at that. I found a one. All right, cool. Can I do better? So I found this one, by the way, and this is in uh, zero, one, two. This is in index two. Wicked. This is in two. So far, the best I've done is two. Can I do better than that? Well, these would all be worse, so I'm not going to check my binary search there. I'm going to check my binary search on the left-hand side, which is going to be right here. By repeating that, I'm going to notice that, wow, I find an even better one at index one. My minimum index is no longer two, but it's actually one. I'm going to repeat this for every single row that I go down, basically using the fact that binary search is exponentially faster than doing a linear search in order to ensure that we're never going to make those um, those 1,000 calls. Uh, in fact, the the time complexity of this, and I'm, I'm maybe what I'll say is uh, if we've got n rows and, and m columns, well, if when you're analyzing time complexity for questions like these, you need to ask yourself, what steps am I taking? And then how many times am I taking them? The steps I'm taking is I'm searching for, for a middle element every time. In every single row, if I've got M columns, I'm going to take log of M steps, all right? Because I'm doing a binary search. It would be M steps if I was searching for every single element, but this is log of M. Now, that search I'm doing N times. I'm doing it for every single one of the N rows. And so, this is going to be n log m time complexity. Space complexity, we're not doing any recursion. We're not storing any, any variables barring, barring this one over here. So we've got constant, uh, constant space complexity on that front. Uh, not too complicated, I hope. Uh, let's, let's dive into the code. If you have any questions, you know, play the video back a few minutes, try it again. Uh, or, as always, uh, drop a comment down below. And so I'm going to move my keyboard over here, rearrange, and, and let's have a look here. So they, they give us this, this information up here. Um, and, and we are told, I believe, that in like with respect to restrictions, we're always going to have a matrix. So I'm not going to need to do any sort of uh, error checking here. What I will do, though, is I will say, sorry, as I, I pull my notes up here. What I will say is let me actually begin by getting the dimensions of this thing. All right, so to get the dimensions, to get this, you know, the n rows and, and m columns, they said that we need to make a call to binary matrix. And, and the way we had to do it was by saying binary matrix dot dimensions, okay? And what this was going to return was this was going to return array with, with rows and columns. That would look something like rows, columns, all right? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use uh, some basic destructuring property here of, of Python and say rows, columns is equal to binary matrix dot, dot dimensions. That'll pull both those values out of the actual array. I'm then going to have some sort of uh, min call or min index variable, which I said I'd set to infinity by default. And the reason I, I'm setting it to infinity is because it's uh, it's kind of the maximum possible value you can have. So any column I find that that beats it, if you will, that's lower, we're, we're going to return that value in the end. And so at the end, I, I know I'm going to be returning the minimum column. And now I need to make sure that if we don't find anything, I return negative one, right? If we do find something, I'm going to return that value. So what I'll say is let's return minimum column uh, if uh, the minimum column is not equal to float of infinity. Uh, if it is still infinity, meaning we went through all our binary searches and, and we didn't find any, any real column, we're going to return negative one. All right, now for the actual binary search piece, like I said, we wanna go through one row at a time. So we'll say for i in the range of rows, um, and every single time we start this, we're going to want a, a, a left variable and a, and a right variable, oops, and a right variable. So we'll say left equals zero. That's that's kind of the, the beginning. And then the end is going to be actually the number of columns 
minus one. All right, I don't think I'm doing anything kind of groundbreaking with this one. And then we, we need to jump into our, our standard while loop and uh, you know, for this row, actually do the binary search. So we'll see while, while left is less than or equal to right, because we do want to check them when they overlap, only when they, when they cross over each other are we done. Uh, I'll say that mid, and typically what we'll do, just the math kind of checks out where we can do right plus left divided by two. Um, since we have very small numbers here, they're between one and 100 for both the left and the right, or I guess zero and 99, um, you're good to do it like this. I would, in an interview setting, I would acknowledge the fact that if you've got really large numbers, this could potentially lead to an, an overflow, an integer overflow, because if you add the right and left together, it could be a number that's too large for your programming language of choice to handle. Uh, so you could be a bit fancy here and, and change this to left plus uh, right minus left over two. Uh, the logic here, this is really just a bit of a math thing, so I'd, I'd encourage you if, you, if you haven't seen this before, to, to pause the video, get a piece of paper out, and write these fractions out, and manipulate them so that you can, you can see that this equals exactly what we had before, which is, which is here. Um, so, with that said, that's going to be our, our mid value. Now, we have one of two options, either our, our element equals 1 or it equals 0. Uh, so we can say, if binary matrix, and now we need to check the actual element value, we need to make that API call for this. So we need to get dot get, the row we're at is row i. So we're going one row at a time. And then mid is the, the column that we're interested in. And so what I'm going to do is, is I can say if it equals one, I could just say this. Um, the other option is you can say this because it's going to be a not zero value. But I'll, I'll be clear here and I'll say if it equals one, then we want to compare the minimum column to what we previously had. So our previous minimum column and the current midpoint that we're looking at. We'll compare those and grab the smaller of the two and then we're going to say right is equal to mid minus one. So this was like in this scenario where I found my middle column was equal to this, this value of one. And now what we wanted to do was to say, let me check on the left hand side of, of this array or right of this, of this row. Otherwise, if that's not the case, if I didn't find a one, I found a zero. If I found a zero, I want to check on the right hand side. And so I'm going to set left is equal to mid plus one. And that would be something like in this uh, maybe this scenario over here where we first found a zero and said, all right, cool. Well, everything from, from this midpoint and to the left is useless. So let me shift my left point over here and look at the larger half of this array. And that should be it. So I'm, I'm actually just going to run this and, and make sure that I didn't do anything wrong, which I did. Uh, it says local variable. <laughs> so what happens when I won't shut up while I'm coding? Right equals calls minus one. I never actually defined it to be anything. Um, let's try that. Oops. All right, and there we go. So um, for whatever reason, that took quite a while, like 112 milliseconds. I, I think that this uh, second solution, so actually this is the, the exact same solution I, I ran before, but this one would have been uh, higher. Yeah, this one was in, in the 97% uh, or 97 percentile. So don't don't worry about that, that number here. This is a, it's a good clean solution. Uh, it's gonna get you to where you need to be in that interview. And as a quick recap, all we did was just a, a row by row traversal downward through this thing and then a, a binary search to find the earliest column in which we find a one. Um, you repeat that for every row, you get your answer at the end. Any questions, leave them down below. Any other requests, uh, email me, my contacts down below as always. And finally, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.